In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel an accounts payable agent report within QuickBooks Online. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in our test file, Craig's Design and Landscaping Services. We're going to go down to the reports on the left side, and we're looking for our accounts payable aging report. This time, we're going to go to the standard reports in order to do that, the standard tab up top. Note that the major reports up top will be in the favorites, the balance sheet and the profit and loss, most likely. These are the financial statement reports. We are looking now for an accounts payable type report. That's going to be related to a balance sheet report, and it's going to be related when you think accounts payable, you're thinking, who do we owe money to? This is a liability type report. We're trying to think, if, how do I pay people? Who do I have to pay soon? So if we scroll down to our sections, remember that we can expand or unexpand the sections. It's not in the business overview section. We're not talking about who owes you or us money right now. That's not what we're looking at. It's not a sales or customers. That's not what we're looking at. We, what you owe that's what we're looking at what we owe that's our section so this is what we want to see that's what accounts for payable typically is this is what we owe so now we're going to scroll down through this and we're looking for the ap aging summary that's what we will do before we do that however remember that most of these other reports are going to be almost all of them if not all of them will be some kind of variant on the information the balance sheet and profit and loss they're related to these reports. These are the financial statements. Let's consider that relationship first. Then we'll go back here, go into the accounts payable aging summary, and it'll be great. So we'll go up to the balance sheet first up top. Balance sheet report. This is going to be the date range. Let's change this date range to 010118 to 123118. And then we will run that report. So here we have it. December uh, 2018, notice it's a point in time. The general balance sheet is just one point in time. We're going down now to the liability section. Now, this is a similar report that we did for accounts receivable on the asset side, meaning who owes us money. But now we're going to the accounts payable on the liability side, meaning who do we owe money to. Note that many companies, the accounts receivable is really important. Even small businesses, they, they really obviously track if they have people owing them money, who owes them money very detailed. The accounts payable, uh, a lot of small businesses may be more on a cash basis. They may pay more of their uh, expenses up front and may not be tracking as closely the accounts payable or may not need to do the aging report as closely. However, as companies become larger and larger, and even small companies should, because it makes a big difference. We, we want to be able to pay the bills when we need to pay them and not typically before. We want to track this information because it the time value of money is important. So in any case, it's similar to the accounts receivable in the format of the report. Now we're thinking about who we owe money to. Larger companies will have people that work exclusively with basically this report that uh, figure out how, how, who we owe money to, who do we need to pay, when do we need to pay them, do we need to, you know, can we get, is there any way we can extend the time period on which we need to pay? Uh, that could be a full-time job depending on the size of the company. It could have multiple people related to it. So here we have that. This is going to be the information. This is who we owe money to. The next question when we consider this number is, who do we owe money to and how past due is it? That's our question on the balance sheet. That's what this report we're generating will answer. Who do we owe money to? The vendors. We call them vendors. We, call money, we owe money to vendors. Who do we owe money to? Which vendors? And how past due is it? Is it past due? Are we gonna, are, is there going to be a penalty that we incur if we don't pay it? When do we need to pay them? Those are the questions that we want to take a look at. So we're going to get to the same number, organizing it now, not by just one number of how much we owe liability, but by who we owe. Also note that if you go into this number, just like we go, like if we use the quick zoom, in other words, then we will have detail, like we will have detail in any report. But this is broken out by uh, the date, not by who we owe. So this detail is by when it happened. This is kind of like a general ledger, a GL. You see bills and payments. That's what you'll see in accounts payable. But it doesn't give us who we owe the money to. That's what we want to look at now. That's why we need a separate report. Let's find it. We'll go to the reports on the left side. We're going to scroll down once again to where we went before, what we owe, what we owe, what you owe, what we owe. And we're going to go down to the accounts payable uh, summary report, accounts payable aging 
summary report. We'll select that item. We're going to change the date. It's going to be as of a point in time. We don't have a date range here. It's just one point in time. This is the point in time report. It is what it is as of now. We can't change what we owe. So it's 1231.18. We're going to run that report. And you might be thinking, well, you could pay someone what yet, but that's activity. That's the future. As of now, we owe people money. So, <laughs> and this is what we owe. People owe us money too, and that's great. We have money. That's due. It's all as of this point in time. So it's a similar report that we saw as we can see to the accounts receivable aging. If we scroll down, we're going to see the total being that one same, that same 160267. And QuickBooks will force that to happen. It's very difficult uh, in the accounts receivable and the accounts payable accounts to be different than the aging reports for accounts receivable and aging because QuickBooks forces us to, to have a vendor related to payables and a customer related to receivables. And so these, these numbers will typically tie in unless we, there's something funny happened like we made a journal entry or something and didn't assign a customer. We see the format of this. We have the vendors. Remember, we call these vendors. These are people we owe money to. So these are gonna be the vendors on the left side. It's broken out then by current and then how past due. So this one's current. That's good. I mean, you know, that's not bad. We owe that money we have, if we're not past due. These are going to be one to 30 days. So that we got to pay those pretty soon. This one, for whatever reason, we haven't paid and it's 31 to 60 days past due. That's not good. If we want to see the more detail on this item, we can select it and use the quick zoom or auto zoom feature. It's a bill, of course. That's where most of them will be. That's what generates accounts payable, a bill. And if we select the bill, then we'll go into the detail and we'll actually find the bill. This is the bill we wrote, utilities and gas. <laughs> We better pay that soon. We're gonna we're gonna lose the utilities and gas. Not good. So we're gonna close this back out, and then we'll go back up and go back to the report summary. And so that's gonna be the format of the information. It doesn't look that long of a report like right now. Like I say, for smaller companies, it may not be a, a very extensive report. However, for the larger the company is, the more extensive this will be, and the more important it is to really really get down when you pay people and make it a precise science of doing so because the time value of money makes it significant, makes it something worthwhile, makes it something you want to do. Then if we go to the sort field up top, it's in the default by vendor. If we want to go to ascending order, then we see it from uh, lowest to highest. If we want to go to descending order, and we're looking at totals highest to lowest, this, if we're going to some kind of order format, would probably be best because it's the ones we're most concerned to the least concerned up top these are probably our most important vendors that are that are we want to take care of and make sure we don't uh, have a bad relationship with we have the same kind of breakout current then typically 30 days that's the time periods past due that we usually would want we have four periods we could increase this if we choose we could say we want six periods past due run that report and that could give us more detail if we if we decide for whatever reason we like to pay people really late and some some vendors are okay with that maybe so then we can do that we'll go back to the standard of four the default and so we'll go back to that standard of four and that's going to be the AP aging we're going to do some formatting as we've done in the past we're going to remove the date and time so let's go up top customize report and we will go down to the header and footer we're going to scroll down the header and footer remove the date prepared time prepared no report basis again why Accounts payable is an accrual account. If there is, I mean, if we're on a cash basis, pure a cash basis, we don't have accounts payable. We don't track who we owe. Uh, and that's one of the problems with a pure cash basis. So uh, this is an accrual account. It has, there is no, there is no cash basis for it. So we will then run this report. And there we have this. We're going to go up top then and do some more customization and we'll make the remove the pennies so we're going to take the the cents off we're going to make negative numbers bracketed although i don't believe there are any and there shouldn't be typically unless something funny happened we'll also make them red as is our custom as is the case as we've been doing so far run that report and there's what we have looks a little bit cleaner a little bit nicer and we're good on that now we're going to save this report so that we have this custom kind of format anytime we want to go into it we don't need to customize it again it'll be customized for us so we'll go up top and say save customization report name looks good we'll keep that we're going to put that into my reports these are my report group 
and we will then save this. Let's see, there it is, custom report saved successfully. Nice, great, looks good. We'll then go to the reports on the left side and double check that they are indeed saved successfully by going to the reports or the custom reports up top. They're in my reports. And then we're gonna go up top to AP Aging Summary. AP Aging Summary, there it is. So there we have it. Notice you could change the, the columns as well if you wanna make this a little bit lar longer, just like kind of in Excel. You can left click on it and change the column length so you can see the full name if necessary. Now we're going to print this and export it to Excel. So we'll print first. So we'll go up top and use the printer. And looks like it all fits on a page. Looks good. We're going to print it to a cute PDF printer. Practicing doing that. Practice sorting this information. This is the printer we're sending it to. It is free. You can download it. We're going to go to the print button. We're then going to scroll to the desktop up top and we're going to go to GGG or Get Great Guitars. That's going to be the future folder. We're on section four, section four, and I'm going to within section four, scroll up and we want the name to be, you can't use a dash again. So it's got to be just AP or A.P if you so choose, Aging Summary, and that's going to be 12.31.18. I'm going to go ahead and shift left. I'm holding down shift and the left arrow, right click and copy. I'm just going to copy that so that we can then paste it when we do this again. We'll save that. And that is that. I'm going to close this back out. Now we're going to export to Excel. So I'm going to get the export, exports to Excel. There it is. We're in Google Chrome. So it's going to show up down here in Google Chrome. We'll open it up within Google Chrome. As it does, we may have to adjust for the uh, enable editing we will enable the editing because we like to edit stuff and then we check if it fits on one page i typically do that by going to the page layout tab and notice it's not on one page so now we're going to go back and now we get to do some formatting which is great so now we're going to say well how are we going to fit it on one page note before it fit on one page probably because i expanded this cell in quickbooks that's why quickbooks didn't have that expanded so we could, we could minimize this cell. You can also just try to adjust this. So notice we could go up top and we could change the orientation from portrait to landscape. But if all of our other reports are portrait, we may not want one in there that's kind of landscape. What if we have to staple them together? Or what if someone's looking at them in a PDF? We'd, pr we'd prefer to have them all portrait, like vertical, if possible. So maybe we can do that. Like maybe we can highlight these cells and change the columns. So if I highlight all those cells, put our cursor right between two of them. If we double click, it'll make them as large as possible to still fit. So if I double click, then it makes them as large as possible to still fit. Now they're all different sizes, so maybe that's not optimal. Maybe we wanna make them a little bit larger. Maybe I'll make them, now if I make them any size now, they'll all be the same to that size. So I'm gonna make this one a little bit larger. Let's try it again, a little bit smaller. And there, there's something that can kind of fit. So notice you can, you can toy around with it here, tinker around with it, and make it look nicer. And whatever format you think would make it, make it look nice. A lot more formatting options within Excel if you want to uh, change any of it. Then we're gonna go ahead and save this. We'll go to the File tab up top. We're gonna save this report. We're gonna browse to save where we want to save it to. So we're gonna look to where we want it. Scrolling up top to the desktop, we're gonna go to Get Great Guitars, Section 4. I'm going to rename this report to AP Aging Summary and save that report. Here's where we saved it to, the GGG folder. I'm going to open that up. We're going to go into Section 4. And here is all of our reports. Remember, if we were going to give this to someone, we could give it to them you know, in separate attachments. We can zip a file or we could try to put it all on one file. And that's what we'll do now. So we're going to put it into this file, Section 4 Reports in the Excel sheet and then make a PDF file from it, which will just be one file. Here is our report that has multiple tabs in it now. We're gonna add another tab to it. So here's our new tab that we have added. We're gonna go back to our prior report and just copy it. So I'm gonna select the whole thing, Control A, or select this triangle, right click on that selected area and copy it. Then I'm gonna minimize this. I'm gonna go up top in A1, right click and paste the first one. I'm just going to paste it there and there we have it. Now we're going to rename this sheet. 
So I'm going to go back to the prior sheet again. I'm just going to copy this name, double clicking on it, right click and copy. I'll, I'll right click and copy. It won't let me do it. I'm going to hit control C to copy and then go back to our report, double click on this name, control V to paste. So, and then click off of it. And so now we have all our reports here on one sheet. We could give this to someone. If we don't want to give an Excel sheet, we can use it to create one file with all the reports in them by going to the file tab up top, going to the print options. And then we want to print uh, the active sheet. We want to print the entire workbook. We'll print the entire workbook. Here we have it for pages. There's our entire workbook. And so we can now give that to someone. I won't print it now, but it'll save it as a PDF because it's going to a cute PDF printer. We will do that at the end when we're done with section four. Again, good way to turn in homework, good way to turn something into a supervisor, good way to give something to a client, good way to save it for later if we need it for later use as well. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.